This is question six of the 2019 Ordinary Level Leave Insert paper. You can find a link to the image of this question in the description below. It's made up of two parts. Part one asks us to solve this inequality and to draw your answer on that number, on that number um, line. And part B asks us to solve a different algebra question. Here is part A on the board right now. We have two multiplied by three minus X is less than eight. Now the problem most students get with inequalities, they, they just become worried by them. One thing I'd like to say is we can deal with them just like there was an equals here. The same as if this was an equals, except for one small difference. So if, if you, as a student, it makes you feel better to leave this here, that's okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it. It's, a, it's bad practice, but it works identical, except for one rule you need to remember. That rule is, if we multiply or divide, multiply and divide are pretty much the same thing, if we multiply or divide by a minus number, you need to change this direction. And that's it. Everything else will work the same as if we had an equals. So let's go through this slowly. How do we solve an equation for x? We want to get x on its own. We want to take every other number away, really. Because there's only one x. We don't have to add them together. There's nothing tricky to do here. This is a simple enough um, question to rearrange. So this 2, it's acting on everyone. Let's get rid of that one first. Or you could multiply it in first, it's your choice, but that 2, I'd like to get rid of it now. So what is the 2 doing? It is multiplying. How do we get rid of uh, multiply? We divide. The opposite to multiply is divide. We divide everybody on the left there's only one term on the left, it's all one big term. And we divide everybody on the right. Like so. Two divided by two disappears. Well, we're left with one. We're always left with a one when we divide. And, but we don't butter it right in. That's why I, I can say it disappeared. I, well, I like to say, it. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't. Three minus x is less than four. Okay, now I'd like to get rid of this tree. How do we get rid of this tree? What's this tree doing? This tree is actually adding. Lots of students think it's taking away. No, the X is taking away. The tree is adding. There's a little invisible plus out front of it. So how do we get rid of that? Let's see, tree minus X minus tree. If I take a tree away from everything on the left, it's everything on the left got that tree taken away. It just happens once though. And I'll take away from everything on the right. So three, take away three, leaves me zero. So we're left with minus x is less than one. Nearly finished, except we don't want minus x. And just as well, maybe just to confuse some people, there's always a one there. Remember, people are confused, sorry, to not confuse some people. People are confused by these minuses. It's minus one. That's a number in front of that x. It's a minus one in front of that x. We just don't bother writing ones all the time. So I want to get rid of that minus one. So I'll divide both sides by minus one, just like I did up there. That's our problem. That's where our problem um, arises. So let me actually rub that out and do one more extra line. Uh, let me bring it over here, in fact. Minus one X less than one. So again, I'll do it on its own now. We'll divide by minus one and we'll divide by minus one. That's where our problem, alarm should go off right now. That is not right, what I just wrote. You cannot divide by a minus number without first doing something. So that's wrong, let's try that again. Minus one X, one on the right. If we divide both sides by minus one, this has to change. This is the correct answer now. You have to change that sign. That's the only difference to rearranging equations. So what do we get? Minus one divides by a minus one, leaves just one, one X, is greater than one divided by minus one, a plus and a minus make a minus, uh, one divided by one is just one. So X is greater than minus one. So the last thing we need to do is we need to put it into a number line. You will get uh, most of your marks. How many marks that for? That's probably 10 marks for that. For, for this part A, you'll probably get nine for this, maybe eight, which means there's still a couple of marks, I'm not really sure how many, 
to get for drawing the answer in. So how do we draw this? X is bigger than minus 1. So we just find out, think of it like equals again. It's pretty useful to think like equals a lot. X is equal to minus 1. Minus 1 is the important part. Minus 1 is going to be important here. But X is bigger than it. What numbers are bigger than minus 1? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Everything this way. So this is what we, we draw our baby a line going like this. Everything above the minus 1. There's one more thing. You need to tell them whether this is greater than or whether it's greater than or equal to. There's a different way to do it. We'll do this by an open bracket. The other way, uh, I'll do it down there. If this was um, x is greater than or equal to minus 1, we'd do a closed bracket like this with the same arrow down. So that's just a slight difference that you will lose a mark on if you do not do the correct one. So they are testing you on all of these little things. All right, let me rub this out and we'll do part B. So here we have part B, 2 to the power of 2x minus 1 is equal to 64. Solve for x. Now this looks very complicated. As it happens, you can do this two ways. Um, one is involving logarithmics, which we do not teach in the ordinary level. So I will show you that at the end, just in case some of you may have seen it. Maybe you've done some on our level and you have seen it before. But for now, I'll show you how you would be expected to do it in the ordinary level. It's a little easier. So the first thing we would need to do when dealing with powers, we need both sides, or we need all numbers really, to have the same base. We need 2 to the power of something here. And in, in questions in ordinary level, they will give you things that work like this. So the hint here is, 64 must be 2 to the power of something. Really, you're meant to notice that. That is part of the question. That's the sort of first part. You need to notice that 64 is 2 to the power of something. 2 to the power of 2, 4, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Say testing it out, test it out on a calculator, you will find that 2 to the power of 6 is equal to 64. So that is the first step. You are meant to notice that 64 could be rewrote as 2 to the power of something. So you'll see questions like this a lot. 3 to the power of x is equal 27 maybe. You'll see questions, you need to know is 27 can be rewrote as 3 to the power of something. 3 to the power of 3 in this case. And that will come up many times in the exam, so be, be ready for that. In, so in this case, we need to change this into this. At this point, let me re-read this. 2 to the power of something is equal 2 to the power of 6. Well, then this something must equal this 6. The 2s are the same. The only thing different there was this part here. So that means this part must equal 6, because the 2s are the same. 2x minus 1 equals 6. This we can just rearrange. Let's do it now. 2x, add 1 to both sides, plus 1 to left and right, we get the one, minus 1 dispersed, and the 6 becomes a 7. Let's divide both sides by 2. We get x is equal 7 divided by 2. The 2 disappears, and 7 gets divided by 2. That's our final answer. That's everything you need. They want to know what x is equal to. They didn't ask you for a decimal. If you did write x is equal 3.5, that's okay. I don't like it. I'd much rather a fraction. A fraction is much easier. Uh, to look at in maths, we use fractions much more in maths. You need to get used to them. Anyway, this is your final answer. Oh, I did promise I'd show you a different way to do it. And uh, this is this again. This is more for honor level student. Um, would be able to do this, um, or would have to do this. An honor level student would m maybe be asked this question instead of sixty four. It could be sixty three, and you need to do it this way. Okay, so here's another way to do it. You're able to use this thing called logarithmics. So the log to the base 2 of both sides here. 2 to the x minus 1. Um, 2 to the x minus 1 is equal log to the base 2, 64. So again, once we do the same thing to both sides, we're fine. So I introduced this new log to the base 2, log to the base 2. Again, if you're an ordinary level student and you've never seen this before, do not worry. Stop the video now, in fact. We're finished. That was the full answer. I'm just showing a different way. 
Now log to the base two and two to the power of, they cancel each other. That's what the opposite of two to the power is. And we're left with two x minus one. And a calculator will do this one. Now, because it's an ordinary level question, we should be, do it, be able to do it in our head. A log is asking a question. It's saying two to the power of what is equal 64. But we have calculators, we can type this into a calculator. It will give out the answer six, but that's the answer we already knew. Once we get here, it's the same as previously. So that is another way to solve this question. All right, if you have any questions about either of these types, again, this is more Warner's level, or part A, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, goodbye.